Uh, we're joined by our first uh, guest, Council Commissioner. I'm going to call you Commissioner, Berkeley County Commissioner, Eddie Gokina. Welcome, Eddie. Good morning. Thank you. How are you? Doing well. What did you do this weekend? Man, it started out great. On a Friday, we went, uh, my wife and I went and uh, uh, participated in the uh, honoring Kisner Kisner. with yes. the bridge dedication, which was very well done. Um, my hats off to Mike Hyatt on yes. that, to taking the role with that. And uh, very fitting, uh, now Shug's Memorial Bridge overlooks the uh, the ball fields there. It's perfect. perfect. It's very appropriate, I it think. It was. And, uh, and then Sunday, we went to the Morgan Cabin uh, Memorial for uh, veterans. And uh, there were four veterans that spoke, uh, two from Vietnam who uh, were... Uh, you know, in active duty in Vietnam, so to, to hear their stories and their struggles, and uh, highly respect uh, those, those gentlemen and the two ladies uh, because they were in the nursing uh, portion. Uh, and then yesterday we did have uh, the opportunity to go to the park and pres- um, participate in that. It was a great turnout. It wasn't was. It, it was yeah. really, really the nice. The Rotary Club does a great job. Yeah, it's the best of small town America. You know, it, it is. And Free it, breakfast for everybody. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, Eddie, you've been in your position now for, gosh, almost six months, right? Um, or actually, no. Two and a half two, years. Two and a half years, right? So you're, you're, you're coming up to like the half. Six months. You, right. Did you get the six-year term or the four-year term? No, I'm six. Six. So you're coming up to the halfway point. Yes, sir. Right? Um, what are the things you're most proud of so far, and what are the things we still have look, to look forward to? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, there's, there's been a lot of accomplishments Um you know, my, my thing has been public safety. That's that's what I've been in my entire career. Um, so I, I'm proud of the fact that we've been able to add additional deputies. Uh, that was that was important for me. Um, we've added additional ambulance crews uh, to be able to serve the public uh, recently, and we've got. Uh, we're working on ways to uh, fund additional firefighters. So uh, you know, that's a challenge, and um, but it's one worth working for so what's the uh, price tag on on, on funding more firefighters uh, is probably it? around 2.5 million additional to what we already do and we're we're probably at two three right now okay yeah so, so you would like to double the amount of yeah well yeah we need to um we need every volunteer fire department has, has asked for 24 hour staffing which currently four of them have 12 hours a day uh but we need to go 24 7 and, uh, you know, it's important that when somebody calls for 911 uh, in the middle of the night that they get an ambulance or, and a fire truck and a police car when they need it. So uh, we just we need to get that immediate response. That's what we're looking for. John? Is there, are there plans to build additional fire stations? There is, John. Um, actually, right now we're working uh, towards building a new station on the north end of the county. Uh, it will be basically replace the Beddington Fire Department. So in the same area, it, it will be uh, moved out on Route 11. Uh, the fire board has already purchased a piece of property uh, just before you get to Spring Mills, right there, at Brown Road. Um, but this is going to be a little bit different, and it needs to be different for the future. Uh, this needs to house fire, EMS, and law enforcement. Uh, we've never done a station involving uh, law enforcement. But as we grow and we need to prepare ourselves for the future, uh, we need to make facilities for them uh, so that we're not centralized at one place in the county that we can spread our services out. So that is actually farther away. I, I live on the Potomac, sort of near Whiting's Neck, but closer to Shepherdstown than that. And Beddington is my closest fire station. So it's, it's a 10-minute response now. So it's going to go out to a 12, 15-minute response? That's true, um, but also when you look at the hot, what we consider the hot zones, we put that station will be right in the middle of their hot zone. Mm-hmm. That's that's the area that they respond to. Because of the population to. growth yes. further off in the spring mill area, correct? Yeah, so, um, but what I'm hoping that can make up that difference, John, is an immediate response. Because of the 24-hour? Yes, sir. Yeah. Matt? You mentioned hot zones. How many hot zones are in the county? Well, I mean, every every fire department will, or EMS will have mm-hmm. their what they consider to be their hot zone. Okay. Their busiest area is what I'm talking about, All right. where their largest call volume is. 
and the, that's growing on a regular basis. What is the challenge that the growth is presenting to public safety in our county? Well, like I say, you know, a 24-hour staffing, you know, this was never, ever considered, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago. This wasn't even more of a discussion. Yeah. You know, but it certainly has been, you know, I got really involved with the county in 2011. I got hired in 2010 and 2011. We started putting staffing into the stations. Um, it was by necessity. It wasn't necessarily by desire. It was, they were failing, you know, and you have a, anywhere from a 60 to 70% failure rate during the day. You got to do something about that. And uh, what we were doing was not efficient. We had one engine that ran the entire county with a crew. Um, I mean, there were good days. I mean, you fought a lot of fire and saw a lot of things, but we weren't efficient. So we were able to split those crews up, one north and one south, and uh, become much more efficient with our operation. And, uh, and then as, as that took place, then we started expanding, you know, out a little bit further. You know, we're still, uh, we still have needs for EMS on the west side of the county. Uh, we have a station in uh, Mountain Lake Road that needs uh, EMS coverage uh, desperately, and we'll get there. Uh, it, it just takes time and money, and we just did an increase for the ambulance fee, uh, in which they they uh, they hit the ground running. Uh, when that fee was uh, increased, they went ahead and put additional crew on the north end and the south end. They already had additional crew in the middle, uh, but we need to get a crew on the west side to be able to cover that area. Not just the Woods Resort. Everybody always says the Woods Resort. It's just not for them. It's it's that whole region. And plus, when the Hedgesville ambulance is out, it will be the next one in to cover that area. So in, in the hot areas, does that kind of translate to the commercial areas? Well, commercial and, and high residential growth. Okay. And do we have statistics? Do you keep statistics on... When I ran out of Prince William County, Virginia, we, I was in one of the hot zones, and the vast majority of calls, what we call smells and bells, right. you know, just fire alarm sounding, but no, no real fire. Do we have statistics on on in those hot areas, particularly in the commercial, how many of them are actually incidents as opposed to malfunctioning equipment? I don't think it's going to break it down that far, John. I mean, I knew it, it does on their report system, but I don't know that it does with the nine one one. I mean, every call is a call until proven otherwise. So. Yeah, but at the same time, um, I mean, I hear what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, but uh, it's it's really hard to disseminate, you know, the house fire from the automatic alarm at right. 2 o'clock in the morning or mm -hmm. 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So, Eddie, I presume the um, volunteer fire departments are on board with this and are, are behind you, uh, behind the, the county council's move to, to make it a, a fully paid firefighting uh, force, if you will? Well, it won't be fully paid. Okay. It, it's an integrated uh, combination system is what it okay. is. It's the way it's designed and, and truly the way it, it, it needs to go. I mean, you know, I, I have a... A, a deep history, you know, with the fire service, and there, those folks, even though the, a lot of the faces have changed, nearly all the faces have changed, quite honestly, but um, they need to continue to, to do what they've been doing in their communities for a long time, and they have a lot of pride, and I get that. What where my problem is, don't stand in the way when we're trying to get people help at three o'clock in the morning, and you're. You, you can't go on a call because you got to go to work. Right. So, but they've all sent letters requesting staffing. Every one of them has sent letters requesting 24 hours a day staffing. So, two and a half million, right? Where, where do we get the money from? What's the, what's the county's plan on, on getting there, if you will? Where do you, where do you get that from? Well, I, I think that the plan A needs to be the fire fee. The fire fee was set up uh, to run the fire service in this county even though it was never really intended for staffing. Yeah. Uh, but the ordinance does say to uh, provide financing for the fire service. Okay. Now, those needs have changed, okay? Um, I mean, there's a, there's, there's possible, we have to, you know, you always got to have a plan A, B, and probably a yep. C. Uh, the one cent sales tax, you know, would take care of so many problems for this county. And uh, it's, it's a little frustrating sometimes when the legislature is taking care of the municipalities the state's very well taken care of right now. I mean, they got more money than they've ever had in their entire uh, history, but the counties are still struggling. Right. You know, and we're struggling because we have needs that most other counties don't have. And I think uh, all the count—I I believe all county councilmen have, have a kind of 
approached the legislators that we need a some kind of one cent or the ability to to increase the the pushback on that and I know we, we failed on some EMS and fire funding in the last legislature right at the end because they were trying to put the fee on the insurance um, of the house which I thought was pretty but the pushback was we're not raising taxes you know that that, that the Republican-led legislation doesn't want to be able to. Well, that's, you know, taxes. that's all fine. You won't yeah. be, you won't be, fi you know, right. But you don't have that responsibility yeah. of providing those services that right. we do. We have that responsibility. Yep. You know, maybe not legally, right, but morally we do. And uh, it, you know, it bothers me. You know, it's like uh, I think it was Sunday. They had a structure fire with uh, multiple townhomes. They had a, a tremendous response. The volunteers did a, a wonderful job. You know, they were. They were uh, supplemented with the paid staff of the county and the paid staff of the city, but but they got out the door, you know, in in really good time. And I, I was I was happy because people couldn't help, you know. But um, but we have needs that that other counties don't have, and it's just it's because of our growth. It's because mm -hmm. of our location, and uh, and we have the opportunity to actually afford this if we implemented some kind of fee. What well, is the fire fee now, Eddie? Uh, it's, it's around, it, I think it ranges anywhere from uh, 35 to $55, right. uh, depending upon the square footage. Uh, and then you have a commercial rate as well. But, you know, i tell you what I would be willing to do is uh, give us the opportunity to put that one cent on the, on the ballot. Would, would, the, would the folks of this will, county be willing to pay one cent on the dollar, mm -hmm. penny on the dollar, if we can say, look, this is what it's going to do for you. We're going to hire, we're going to hire, uh, you know, 10 additional deputies. We're going, to ha we're going to hire, you know, 25 firefighters. We're going to hire dispatchers. We're going to hire school resource officers. We're, we may even be able to eliminate the uh, stormwater tax. I think that that would be the the, the great thing, right? If 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 the legislature w were to talk about this, they would say, "Listen, what can you give back?" And you know that stormwater, that rain tax, if you will, that would be something that people hate. That would be, I think, pretty positive. I think people get really nervous when you start talking about tax increases. It makes so much sense. The day that it's it's uh, proposed and the day that it is passed we celebrate because all of these good things are going to happen with this new money but secretly we all know that 10 years from now that's going to go to something different right it, it, or we've we've opened the door to additional taxes so what's another penny and another penny and i think there's just a trust issue as much as anything else we start raising taxes it's it's easier to say no than to say yes and open that door. I'm not saying that's that's uh, the right way to go, but I think that that's an inherent fear that is, is built into the system that has to be overcome. Uh, well, I mean, you can sit there and, and be afraid of anything. You can turn that light switch off. You might be afraid of the dark. I, I will know. scream and run away. Well, but you know, <laughs> uh, you know, you have to put people in in uh, positions that that people trust. I mean, you know, I, I hope people trust me. That, and I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you, if this is what I say I'm going to do, that's what I'm going to oh, do. Oh, I think everybody trusts you. It's just maybe not the guy that's in your spot 15 years from now. Well, well maybe he's not the right guy then. <laughs> you know? but, but, you know, I, I'm willing to put it in black and white. This is exactly what we will do with every penny that we get. We have that need. You know, there's, there's no doubt. You know, I, I think it's critically important that our law enforcement has the amount of people that they need to serve the public and to be able to keep themselves safe, that when they enter into situations that aren't, uh, you know, the, the most positive situations, that they have the skill set and the personnel to take care of that situation. What has the 1% sales tax done in the city of Martinsburg in a negative fashion? I, you know, I, I think it's mostly been positive. I mean, you ask the residents of, of Martinsburg City, and they all love it. I mean, you, you can see the improvements mm -hmm. that have happened in the city of Martinsburg, wh whether it's to the streets, the streetscape, or mm -hmm. the res. You asked people like maybe Delegate Height, the businesses, <laughs> that right. feel like they're getting double taxed. But I, I think when you know, what would a what would a one percent sales tax look? look like in money for for berkeley county mm -hmm. eddie is, is yeah been, i think it, it's estimated uh 12 to 14 million um annually uh, yes sir 
Yeah, and that's, uh, and you know, we that's would... That's what, a quarter of your budget already, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but you got to understand that, um, you know, we would not be able to, to staff every fire department overnight. This is, this is a gradual... One, one station per year is yeah. would be my suggestion uh, to be able to do that. Uh, but law enforcement, you know, get them in here. School resources officers, get them in here. Dispatchers, let's go, you know. So there's... There's places for the money to go, trust me. And again, with the I-81 corridor, I know the argument has been made as well. Uh, a lot of that money that would be coming in is not necessarily from Berkeley County residents. Because Absolutely. that 1% sales tax is hitting anyone who jumps off uh, at Inwood, at Spring Mills, at Martinsburg, and spends money. Yeah, and I mean, if you would look at it doing it like an emergency services levy across the county, uh, that's going to affect every, every person in this county that, that owns a home. Whereas if you do the one cent sales tax, it, it we get a lot of folks traveling, like you just said, on the 81 corridor, and uh, you know it, it helps offset our cost. Can you carve out certain purchases and exempt it from the one percent sales tax, like food, for example, groceries? That's oh, what absolutely. Saying. Well, the groceries aren't taxed, so right, right. right. Groceries are not. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think new cars are uh, yeah. in the city. Um, so it's truthfully, I don't. I wouldn't really care what. They feel that needs to be carved out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a middle of the road guy. Let's compromise. Let's, let's find that middle of the road where everybody can be happy. Uh, I really like the idea of putting it on the ballot too, to let the people decide. Hey, I, I think that's something I, I, that if if you can get behind, you can get your people behind. You you run a campaign on it. But um, that can't be done without the legislature, right? Well, the, the, you you the control legislature. everything we do. Yeah, yeah. The, the legislature controls the, the sales tax. So I mm -hmm. think that's you know what, what Eddie's saying is it. You, I could see something like this working, but again, it, it's it, you've got to get a hundred legislators to, mm -hmm. to or fifty-one to agree with you in the Senate. So in West Virginia, the legislature has to approve any increase in any taxes. Any taxes, yes. So Berkeley County has no choice, or Mingo County, no, nobody can choose on their own. The only, only thing we have any control over are the fees. Well, and I, I believe, and Eddie, tell me if I'm wrong, I believe the County Council, County Commission, um, they can implement zoning. Um, they can't implement any impact fees without the zoning. Um, but that's another way we could look at this and, and, and implement some kind of impact fee for new, new, new homes being built and mm -hmm. things like that to help with the infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, you know, zoning is always a you know one of those Hot issues. <laughs> are, are we too far gone for zoning? I mean, oh, when no. you look at the growth in the county and where things are and how things are laid out and scattered, you, could you still do zoning? I, th I think so. If yeah. if somebody uh, you know had the desire to bring it forward, you know, uh, I can tell you, I don't. Um, I, I would not fight against it if if a petition came before me, you know, with the uh, proper amount of names on it. I would I would vote to put it on the ballot. Let the people let the people vote on it again. I mean, they voted on it twice, and I'm not so sure that it, that it would I, fail. I think it would um, fail, Eddie. Come on, it was so contentious the last time. Well, you remember it, that? I, I do remember. I know they sold it wrong, but. Yeah, the whole thing was, yeah. they tried to jam everything down your throat at one time. It was like 900 pages by yeah, the end of I, it. I, I would have liked to have seen them, you know, I, this is, and I'm not so sure that zoning is going to take care of all of our issues. No. You know, the, I mean, does, our growth is following the water and the sewer. That's what it's doing. You know, I think what zoning is going to do is, is prevent the uh, sheets from showing up or the, a warehouse showing up in a residential neighborhood. Uh, whereas there's nothing to really stop it unless you have restrictions in your subdivision today. So you mentioned water, and I know um, John Hardy kind of led the charge on getting some funding for water, for the water department here in Berkeley County, some of the tune of 20 million, is that correct? 25. Yeah. Um, so 25 million came in. My question, and, and again, I don't know a lot about this because, uh, you know, this was pre-candidate. Pre um, we still had to raise our water fee, correct? Yes. Even with that twenty-five million, can well, you explain yeah, that? Yeah. Well, I can. Yeah. Uh, it, probably not as well as Jim yeah. Wallet with the water district or right. Greg Rowe, but um, you know, the twenty-five million from the IJDC, which you know John's the uh, chair of, uh, and also uh, twenty-five million from the governor's office. You know, so there's fifty million that uh, that everybody worked towards getting those dollars here to keep those costs down as far as we could push them. Uh, we've, got, we've asked for federal dollars and got a little bit. Uh, we're very disappointed in, in that. But, um, 
but the increase that they that we just approved um i was i was okay with because i i was set in their study group uh when they had the presentation and listened to uh their folks explain how it was going to work so it basically they did a 10 uh 10 percent over the next five years um 10 percent per year or yeah 10 percent per year uh spread out over the five years and i was appreciative of that uh i mean they still have their minimum uh usage which you know is very basic uh, i guess 3400 gallons is their minimum um but at the at the end of the day they did as well as they could possibly do uh to be able to totally replace one water treatment facility uh, upgrade one from six million to ten million, and then expand the the distribution lines in our uh, industrial area, and get it set up, you know, for a water on the west side. Gotcha. So they've done a lot. They, now, they really have. I presume you listened to Rob and East Manor talk, talk last week. We had a lot of talk about trash and and things like that. And I think one of the last conversations that that somebody brought up was, we only have. What was it 10 years or less than yeah. 10 years on on the dump or on the landfill not the dump excuse me uh, does the council have a proposed plan for a new landfill is there something in the works or is that just something that we're all just finding out well i wasn't aware that that was the time uh, i will tell you that that the county council county commission has no authority no, when yeah. it comes to trash yeah um and I, and I did hear a lot of the discussions, you know, because uh, I tune in as much as I can. Um, you know, for me, I, I personally was involved in the Astorga uh, disaster. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, I'm, and my involvement was, look, we, we have a problem here. It's going to be an environmental disaster in that part of the county if we don't fix this. So Apple Valley took the took the lead. They took care of the infestation. They started hauling trash, and they got that building down to where it's manageable. And had it not been for them, we'd have had a building 350 feet long, 150 feet wide, and 30 feet deep full of trash. Right, catching on fire so, all the time. Well, yeah. and, and worse. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I appreciate their efforts uh, in being able to help us solve that problem. So the public waste authorities are the ones who would have, we talked about about a landfill or the next landfill, right? Because I mean, once it's full, it's full, correct? Oh, yeah. That's what we're, we're thinking. Sure. Uh, Eddie, you led the charge, and I know we're, we're kind of getting here to the end of the first segment, but you led the charge on the school resource officer um, in emergency management meeting, you, you and Nate, and you kind of put, put them all together. Are there... With, without going into a one cent sales tax, are there any plans for the, the county to also try and fund more school resource offices? Yeah, um, uh, Councilperson Catlett uh, has really been pushing on this uh, uh, licensing okay. for out-of-state license. And uh, I, you know, I certainly didn't disagree with him at all, supported him everywhere we could turn. Um, so those are extra dollars right there that I feel that can be turned into school resource officers, either from the school system themselves or, or the county. Okay. Uh, you know, if we have to get ourselves in a position where the, sc the school system feels comfortable, the parents feel comfortable, law enforcement feels comfortable in taking care of our children. So um, I'm, I'm willing to invest there, you know, you know, there'll be enough fingers pointed if something horrible goes on. Um, but if we can get people in position uh, to protect our, our children and our, and our uh, teachers, uh, we'll be better off for it.